It's a prosperous nation, a peaceful nation, and regional integration as one of the ultimate uh, objective we have. Yeah, peaceful negotiation. Uh, by the way, Ethiopia is uh, the only landlocked country with the largest population on earth among 44 nations in the world. And let me brief you on something here I uh, prepared uh, regarding this. Um, access to the sea, as you see here, access to the sea uh, is um, uh, legally, actually, the law tells. I mean, Ethiopia has that, that kind of guarantee. Uh, it's very close and near to the, the Red Sea, as you see from this. And these are member states of uh, the uh, EGAD, EGAD, uh, and, um, member states of EGAD. Uh, l let me go ahead. This thing, this is color. Uh, Paul Collier in his book, uh, The Bottom uh, Billion, states that if you are coastal, uh, you serve the world, and if you are landlocked, you serve your neighbors. Look, uh, so coastal uh, countries should support, I mean, uh, serve the entire world. That's the meaning. And this from the economic and strategic point of view, survival and, and prosperity of landlocked states rely on the freedom uh, to the commission and, and trade. So they need, uh, I mean, uh, sea, uh, access to the sea. And our, our focus is basically for, for today only the sea. But Ethiopia's cost for the access to the sea is uh, in includes the Indian Ocean as well. Uh, talking about the uh, Red Sea, uh, it has uh, the length of uh, 2,250 kilometers, uh, that corridor from uh, the Gulf of Aqaba at this very top to the uh, Gulf of Aden, I mean, Babel um, it, This is uh, that, that distance. And it's a very, very important uh, trade route uh, for um, countries of the world. In 1869, the Suez Canal was opened because uh, uh, it shortens the distance of traveling uh, now, uh, around Africa to reach India or China or whatever. Um, annually, billions of dollars, I mean, trade worth billions of dollars uh, pass through that part, and it accounts to 10% uh, of global uh, economy. And there are also military bases in the Djibouti area, for instance, many countries, but I only took some uh, of them. Uh, many countries, including the United States of America and China, the giant economies on Earth, do have military bases. So that's, that's uh, one, one threat for, for um, uh, the countries, I mean, Ethiopia is concerned with that as well, security issue as well. And here are also uh, the issues related to military bases. And I love the word military base diplomacy. And let's, let's move on. And then we go to uh, the issue of Ethiopia. Uh, it, this is also similar. Now, the Red Sea route is an economic blood vessel. Uh, its values uh, will increase. Undoubtedly, it will increase in the future. It's a very important route, uh, which is uh, also needed by others. Uh, before uh, going to um, what Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said, uh, uh, let, me, let me read this. Given geographical, historical, economic backgrounds, Ethiopia has the right to have access to the sea through peaceful means. This, the one in red, through peaceful means. It's not by force like uh, others uh, no, talking and lying. No, the Premier, uh, the premier said, through peaceful means, negotiation, discussion uh, uh, will be uh, used. And uh, in Africa, 17 countries are landlocked, and one third of the population uh, is found in, in uh, Ethiopia among these 17 uh, countries. So Ethiopia demands. These are the ports, uh, by the way, the ports in the only on the um, uh, Red Sea side that you see from uh, Port Sudan here in Eritrea, in Djibouti, and others, uh, the ports are there. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about this. Look at the distance. The distance of these ports, Mombasa, 1,804 kilometers away from Ethiopia, the capital of Ethiopia, Port Djibouti, 1,696, Mogadishu, 1,520. And the nearest port is uh, definitely Asab, which was formerly, uh, of course, uh, part of Ethiopia before uh, the um, Eritrean uh, independence in 1993. Uh, let's move on, let's move on. Um, what do international laws say about um, access to the sea? Uh, Article 125 of uh, United Nations uh, Convention uh, for, of uh, the Laws of the Sea states that landlocked states shall have the right of access to the and from the sea for the purpose of exercising the rights uh, provided for the, co look, the convention supports Ethiopia. So the premier raised that issue because of the uh, legality. We do have the illegal uh, background. Uh, that's, that's why uh, what you said, of course. Uh, let's move on. Uh, this article also, again, it, it repeats the same thing for important export trade that Ethiopia needs. 
ways of negotiation. How would do it, does Ethiopia negotiate, or how can Ethiopia negotiate? Could be the question. The first thing, economic benefits. The premier raised that we can share the energy of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Nam or the Ethiopian Airlines, the Pan African Airlines. We can share the economies of that with these countries, or long time rent, corridor sharing, and swapping, swapping inland areas uh, uh, for coastal areas. This is very unique, and let me let me show you this example. In 1965. Uh, the Kingdom of Jordan and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia did this, and it is the wonderful, wonderful example regarding this. Look, the red one is uh, the land that was taken by Saudi Arabia, and the, the green ones, I mean the, the lines, the green lines uh, show the land that uh, Jordan took from uh, Saudi Arabia. This is a wonderful negotiation. So swapping can, can be another means of that. Um, why does Ethiopia want access to the sea? Could be the question. Why? Why now? And why uh, uh, the premier raised that issue? Because the Red Sea, we do have geographical uh, strategic importance in that area, um, uh, uh, population-wise, area-wise, resource-wise. So the re Red Sea area is geopolitical strategic area for Ethiopia. And access to that sea means uh, access to the wallet. And uh, geographical proximity uh, is very important. The other thing is Ethiopia recently joined BRICS. So its economy is, is boosting. Its economy is, is getting uh, stronger. And uh, also Ethiopia's uh, uh, diplomatic relationship with uh, global powers can, can lead to, to that, to that uh, quest. And economic growth. Ethiopia has started exporting products um, like uh, wheat for the first time in the history of uh, this nation has been exported uh, last year according to the Ethiopian calendar. So that uh, brings that demand. Um, this is the example of the initiatives that are um, uh, being uh, uh, undertaken and the population of Ethiopia is also increasing and uh, now 120 million people and this large number needs uh, the different opportunities uh, that lot meant and uh, recently uh, actually Ethiopia currently is using um, uh, ports of Djibouti and Barbara primarily and others are also economically important for us and the ports of Djibouti we Ethiopians or Ethiopia is importing 95% of uh, its uh, international trade, import export. Uh, so w the quest for uh, sea, Ethiopia has good ground, legal ground, historical ground, because Ethiopia had access to Masawa, access to uh, Tajura, access to Zeila, and many more uh, you know, uh, ports uh, previously. Now became landlocked. The quest, rational, legal, truthful. And uh, I'll be back with other uh, news items. Stay tuned. After a moment, I'll be back.